I'm gonna share. Do a little tech thing. Just gonna share into the Mother Rising group so all of the sisters in there can see what we're doing today. Okay, so today's topic, while Kay is getting set up, we wanted to talk about um, it was a teaching topic that we brought to the Mother Rising workshop on Saturday um, and obviously we went really in depth on it but we thought that we would talk a little bit about it here on our page as well and um, oh I can't actually work out how to do it sorry there's no share to group option really <laughs> we might need to do that on the computer next time okay um, Okay, where was I? Oh yes, so <laughs> talking about parenting, talking about what we wanted to talk about, and I'm not sure where we're going to go exactly today, we're going to give you the basic practice, but that we started talking about masculine and feminine energy within our parenting. And often when the discussion of polarity and masculine and feminine comes up and the qualities of each of those energies, it's often in relationship to two people like one person is holding one energy and the other person is holding the other energy and um, particularly like in romantic relationships and how that plays out, what the role of the feminine is, what the role of the masculine is, etc, etc. But, and all the polarity teachers will say this, we each within us have the masculine and the feminine energy um, and we need both those energies to actually be whole and so even though I'm a woman, um, I also run masculine energy and same for the guys, they run feminine energy and masculine energy. And so when this comes into relationship with parenting is you as a mother will want to make use of both of these energies in the day to day, in moment to moment, you flip between um, qualities that are feminine energy traits and then qualities that are masculine em energy traits and a lot of women often come to us especially mothers that are really frazzled and overwhelmed and stressed out and <laughs> it's not working the way they want it to work um, come to us with themselves being really running a lot of the masculine energy traits and by that we mean masculine energy is very outward directionally focused in action in momentum it's a very dynamic giving energy it's also one that likes to focus on order and, and structure. structure and control and efficiency and getting things done these are great traits. They're also great at holding boundaries and creating structures. All of those pieces um, are traits of the masculine energy. And we're not saying that you don't need them as a mother, because obviously you do. And you are going to be flipping in and out of them. But in our culture, there is a lot of emphasis placed on being in those traits, being in what we call masculine energy. And so we are taught through our entire lives pretty much for most of the last several generations that what is revered or admired in society is getting shit done, being organized, being on top of it, plowing through stuff, you know, all the things that um, it's a very masculine energy orientation and that can actually be quite a stressful place for a woman to come from, nearly every woman, but particularly if you're a woman who really likes to have your natural, your home place, your home essence sitting more on the feminine side of things. Yeah, we, which we discovered every woman that we've worked with, <clears throat> so all the women who are drawn to this kind of work, to um, like spirituality intersecting with parenting, mm -hmm. kind of personal growth, coming home to yourself, parenting in a way that is in alignment with your truth. Parenting with a conscious awareness of your energy and what mm. you're projecting into the situation. Yeah. That they all feel so much more at home. We, we've so often heard that this, in, in different ways, the same thing repeated. It feels like I've found home. It feels like mm. I've come home. I was disconnected from it, but it feels so good to come home. 
when they reconnect with their feminine essence, when they allow that to be the the come back to, like the the resting place, the place to to be in more often mm. than the masculine. So if you have masculine on <coughs> one side and feminine on the other, it's a sorry, that way, it's a continuum. It's not like black and white. There's like shades all the way through, and you will operate as I said you need both in the day-to-day -day, you need both if you're all feminine energy in your parenting there are pitfalls with that too yeah mm, yeah it, it it's it's just not it's not balanced it's not whole like well you tend yeah. to be um well you tend to feel really stressed about any form of conflict you get overwhelmed easily you can't really it's hard for you to have any leadership you feel really um often walked on by your kids that yeah, kind of permissive it, it and, feels like you're being a permissive parent yeah so <coughs> that might be like too much towards the feminine <laughs> you need to bring in a bit more your masculine but most women who are struggling want to actually come back more into their be making use of their feminine energy and so what do we mean by feminine energy because that's a discussion that's worthy of this before we tell you how to get there a big part of it is being more in your body mm -hmm. like feel, feeling the the sensuality and just sensate like being more out of your head in your body mm. being present in your body feminine energy is a slower energy it's a receiving energy um, it's a great way to tap into your intuition, your creativity, your spontaneity, your willingness to be flexible and flow. All of those elements are feminine energy traits. Mm -hmm. And so you can see how you kind of need both of these to create some balance in your day. And if you're really tipped towards the masculine in any sense, like you might not consider yourself a very masculine woman, but still be operating from quite a lot of masculine energy, that's quite possible to do. And it might just happen on a day. And sometimes it just happens by habit because it's what we've been trained to do and yep. be, even though it's not what's true for us, it's just what we habitually do. Yeah. And so while you need both of those energies, it's good to have, you will feel the most comfortable if you have what we call your home essence, your home energy in the driver's seat. Um, and so for most mothers, all the mothers that we've worked with to date, we actually haven't had a mother not want, want, like want to not stay really flipped around. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but it is possible. I would argue it's possible, but we haven't ever come across it. Um, so for most of these women, their home essence, the energy that they feel like they've come home to, that they feel the most good in, I don't know what's the word, yeah, you do, you'll feel it. It feels true. It, it feels, feels true. in alignment yeah. with, it just feels like you're, you're, you've got it. Yeah. yeah. Um, is the feminine energy so if you put that at the core and you allow that to be where your energy is coming from and then you make use of the masculine energy traits that you need around the, around the edges of that but the feminine is informing that for you first it's in your core and then the masculine traits are supporting and serving the feminine inspiration as it comes through and the feminine is where you come home to like to refuel to reconnect if you're feeling out of it like it's 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 home base mm. and you continue to come back to it and then you consciously choose to use the masculine but you always are coming back, back to, to the, the feminine. feminine it's a bit like um the introvert extrovert definitions you know someone say I'm an extrovert and so they fill up being around other people and someone's an introvert and they say oh, I fill up being by myself and but you use both of those things no one's that well very few people are a complete hermit like you flip them back and forth and you're making use of both being with people and not it's the same with the masculine and the feminine you have one that feels more renewal and mm. filling you up and topping you up and making you go oh, this is better mm. um, but you use both the traits yeah yes that's a good analogy <laughs> just thought of that <laughs> <laughs> so because a lot of us are flipped around a lot of us uh, mothers are 
relying on a lot of masculine energy to plow through the day and our days are full and busy and we need to tick stuff off and we need to get stuff done and like I can see we can totally get why there's a lot of masculine energy happening but it's leading to overwhelm and frazzle frustration a sense of I'm freaking can't get in control all the time what else mm. comes up stress and tension and conflict complete lack of enjoyment of your children and parenting it's just like one giant nightmare mm. a high tense situation mm. a lot of the time mm. and like just a knowing that i'm not quite doing this in a way that's true for me but I, like but i can't quite connect to what is true because you're not kind of coming home connecting with yourself yeah absolutely and it feels exhausting to be trying to drive always from an energy that actually isn't your home energy mm. like it's a lot more work to be pushing things through from the opposite and the, and the same for someone who actually has a home essence that's in the masculine they will make use of feminine traits too but if they're trying to come solely from their feminine that's a really hard place for them to be coming from all the time it's not mm. easy it doesn't feel natural to them it also feels disempowering mm. it's a big one too yeah yeah so given that one of the things the very first foundational pieces that we pretty much always share in all our workshops and we did it this saturday in the mother rising sisterhood was what we call womb space and womb space is helping women it's a way to come home to your feminine energy in your body mm. um and as usual the feedback was there was a yeah. lot of feedback, but it was all, oh, my God, that was amazing. Oh, my God, I feel like I've come home. We And come also home. really quickly, sometimes surprisingly, I feel more centered. I feel more calm. I feel more grounded. I feel more at peace. And that is reflected in my family like yeah. immediately. Yeah, like in moments. In fact, we suggested that for some of the mothers who are still nursing, that they experiment this week and drop into womb space before they nurse and watch what happens. Um, it's a really, your children will definitely respond to that shift in energy for sure. So what is womb space? Well, you can talk a little bit about what womb space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go for yeah. it. Okay. <laughs> so womb space is an energetic center in your body. It, it is around the same place where your womb is, whether you have a hi physical Courtney. womb or not. Sorry, just saying hi to Courtney. Hey Courtney. Um, it is the power center. Sorry, I almost touched the painting and knocked it over. That's like a signature <laughs> mark of chaos. I should have knocked that painting down. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's, the, it's women's and particularly mother's power center. It's mm -hmm. like when, when we, because so often where all of we have like we have places where our energy is most centered in our body and often when we're out of touch and we're stressed and we're anxious and we're losing it all our energy is actually up in our heads like mm. the axis of awareness and the it's all the concentration here. of energy is here sometimes it's out of your body yes sometimes yes. Like it's kind of up there somewhere you're like ahead of yourself <laughs> Which feels so ungrounded and so far from being at home. So this practice of womb space is about dropping your energy and your awareness down into your womb space so that you're acting from it, so that you're moving from it, so you're speaking from it, so you're connecting with your children and others from it, so that your, your actions and your relationships in the world are coming from that place, are mm. being being led from that place. Mm. The first time many years ago when I learned about womb space, um, the teacher who was teaching it asked us to drop into womb space and then walk across the room. Like walk across the room the first time just normally and then walk across from And you really do come from a very different space when you're dropped down into womb space in your body. So yeah. womb space is the first power center in the feminine body. And it's kind of loosely aligned with the second chakra. Yeah. Um, the second. It's about a, um, you hands. can't see my. It's about a hand width below your navel. Yeah. And your the second power center for the feminine in a body is often the heart. 
Yeah, but most of us are often thinking, well, that's our feminine center, the heart, and we're coming from there a lot. And it's often where we go to when we try to drop out of our head. We yeah. just go to the heart. We go to the heart, um, which is beautiful, but the heart, and particularly for a mother, is a very giving outwards energy. It's very projected outwards, that heart energy. And actually from that orientation, it's a masculine space. Mm. And also, when... When that's kind of as far as you go with your energy and dropping it down, your heart can often feel depleted. Yeah. So we hear that a lot from women who <clears throat> do this process, that the heart space felt really depleted. Or but tight when, or yeah. contracted or tense. In fact, that happened on Saturday a lot too. Mm. A lot of women said that. We sort of played around with bringing them into different centers. And a lot of the time the heart center is highly depleted for mothers. And the way to change that is to drop down into the womb space and come there a lot more have that be the the home base and from that you can refill yourself you can you you re-energize you top yourself up first and then like we've talked about so often around self-love like you then give you give from the heart from the overflow not from a kind of empty, depleted space. Mm. To actually create sustainability in your day-to-day -day life as a mother, you want to be coming from womb space, overflow to heart space and out. Okay, so there's actually a rhythmic flow of your energy, but the womb space is what sustains the heart space and then out from there. Yeah. Okay, so without going into too much advanced stuff, because we did do a... A lot of it in the class, but let's let's give everyone on our page like a experience of basic, basic yeah. womb space, and this is something that will Kay will guide you into. Do you want to do it? Or you want me to do it? I can. You can do it. Okay. Kay will guide you into it, and then you can play with that over the next couple of days. Practice walking across the room from womb space. Practice having a shower in womb space, practice interacting with your kids from womb space, like, play with it, explore for yourself what feels good to you and what happens in the world around you when you shift where your energetic concentration is in your body. Mm, yeah. So because, sadly, by default, we're so often in our heads, especially when we're stressed, especially when situations get challenging, we'll begin by bringing your awareness into your head and kind of bringing your concentration of energy into your head and feeling what that's like and then dropping down. So close your eyes and bring your awareness to that point in the centre of your head. People call it the third eye behind the middle of your eyes and with your breath bring all the different parts of you that might be scattered elsewhere like sometimes like Lisa said our energy is outside of us our energy is in the future or in the past with your breath draw all that into the center of your head as if there's a magnet or something that attracts in the center of your head and draw all of that energy into that one place And however you want to imagine it, see that energy concentrated, maybe in like a ball of light or some, some form, some image, but see it all collected in the centre of your head. And just for a few moments, notice what it's like to have your centre of gravity be up in your head, to have the focus, the energy be collected up in your head and then with your breath kind of slowly take a few breaths and as you do feel your body relax and use gravity to gently let that concentration of energy drop down your head down your spine and continue to drop through past your heart, past all the chakra centers if you're aware of chakras and right down into your womb space. It's okay if it takes a few breaths. And be gentle with yourself with this because sometimes women 
feel blocked and sometimes it feels hard like you bounce back out of womb space so you don't need to force it this isn't a pushing energy this is a letting it happen energy and this might be a process that you come back to often maybe you haven't fully gotten to womb space and that's okay just let it drop down as far as it can so with your breath just keep letting that concentration of energy drop all the way down into your womb space or as far as it can go and I find it really helpful to place my hands on that part of my body on my womb space and if there's any like extra residual energy that's sort of hanging up in your head space or in your heart space just let it settle just kind of relax and let it all settle down into your womb space kind of slide down your body mm. and then take some breaths as if you're breathing from your womb space like when you're breathing in your energy is expanding from that center so this ball of energy or whatever you see it or feel it as it's expanding out from your womb space out into the world and as you're breathing out it's contracting back into your womb space so there's a sense like that Kay's doing it but you can't see <laughs> <laughs> so breathing in expanding from your womb space and breathing out, contracting back into your womb space. Mm. There's actually a direct link between your breath and your energy. You can actually use your breath and a few other tools, but breath is a big one, um, to direct your energy around your body. So breath is really powerful. Yeah, so that simple act of dropping the energy down into your womb space is it is the basis of this practice from there there's many other things you could do but the main thing I would suggest is aim to continue to come back there and it's not about then coming back out of it you want to practice then going about your day from that place mm. so as, as you leave this video practice coming into your womb space especially if you've come back out just keep coming back and then walk from your womb space or if you're about to go and interact with your children practice interacting with them with your energy dropped down into your womb space so that you're speaking from your womb space and it will feel different like it will still feel feminine but it will also have a sense of um empowerment and self there's a lot of self in there as well mm -hmm. sometimes when we just interact with our children from our heart space it's a really different energy and we often there's none of us there it's all this giving out giving out mm. giving out so womb space will still feel really loving and nurturing to your children but it will feel different to heart space for mm. sure yeah yeah it's it's definitely for me womb space is where if I'm feeling out of control in my parenting if I'm feeling like I'm losing my sense of power like I I don't know how to get my needs met if I come into womb space I have so much more access to the like the strong energy that says I matter and it lands with my children it, mm. it brings me into the equation really powerfully mm. it also allows you to access a lot more patience everything's slower in womb space and also a huge well of creativity in terms of thinking outside the box for creative problem solving. So many things open up mm. when you're in womb space. Um, yay. There's so many places you can go with that. And maybe if we get a lot of interest, we'll do some more advanced stuff on that. But we wanted to bring that to you. It is such an amazing tool to shift in the moment how you feel and thus how you show up. Mm. And so it's a really powerful thing to play with and explore. And just the intention. To come into your womb space and that bringing your awareness to it 
is such a huge part of it. Like, you don't, if, it, if it's feeling like, oh, I'm, I, this practice is so hard for me, I can't do it, like I, um, I can't get my energy down there, just bringing your awareness to that space and holding that intention to be more there opens it up more Absolutely. and more all the time. Yeah, and it may not feel really um, clear and obvious to you, but along with breath, attention and awareness are huge tools for moving your energy around your body. You can move your energy all into your finger or you can move it down into your foot. <laughs> um, through your attention, your awareness and your breath um, are the main ways to move that energy around your body. And if it feels really challenging for you, like Kaya said, be super gentle with yourself. Particularly, womb space stores a ton of emotional stuff in a woman's body, tons and tons and tons, and particularly sexual and birth trauma. So if your birth story wasn't what you hoped, for example, or you have a history of sexual abuse or whatever, then there's a journey there around that. Some people, some so lots of women come to womb space and go, oh, this feels like home. And there is still a large proportion of women who come to womb space for the first time and burst into tears. Yeah, there's lots of there can be lots of grief and emotion. There can be tons there. of stuff, and there also can some be sometimes be just full on disconnection. <laughs> yeah, like I can't get there. I just get bounced straight back out again. So all of that is okay, and just be super loving and gentle with yourself as you and go every, through that process. Every little act of what Lisa just said, intention, mm -hmm. awareness, and breath. It. it even if it doesn't seem like it is making any changes or creating any movements in yourself, it is. It is, for sure. Yeah. And if you want to, you can always reach out to us and we'll try and find an extra way of offering some support around it. Yeah. And, and when Mother Rising's open next, come and join us in there. Yeah. We do tons of really deep, deep dives in this stuff. Okay. So that's it for today. It's a little longer. Sorry, our 15 minute live didn't work. <laughs> We're not very good at short lives. I'm very, very sorry about that. <laughs> okay, I think that's it for today. Yeah. So we'll be seeing you next week. Bye bye.